Cheers and salutations. Pack your packs. Get ready to grab a tasty snack and a tasty beverage. We're about to go on an adventure. That's right. That's right. We're going to go on an adventure. I hope you got your passport all set up. Boot up, suit up, and fasten your seatbelts as we get ready to fly to the Netherlands. Now, I've never been to the Netherlands. And if we have any viewing audience members from the Netherlands, well, please, 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 please type, type, type in the comment section below and tell us about places we should check out. But until then, we are heading to Nether Netherlands Explained by Countries Explained. So, look, for all the videos that we check out here for Americans Learn, please go to the original content creators. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And I know that you, being the hip, cool cat that you are, will do the right thing and check them out. So, support their original channel and be sure to give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe too. And if this is content you guys and gals like us to check out, well, give us your feedback because it's fundamentally important. But until then, hurry up, run, let's get on our flight too. The Netherlands, and let's check it out in a three, a two, a one. Hey, all right. A very warm welcome to you all. We're back with episode number two on our journey throughout the world. And this time, we're visiting the Netherlands because, you know, why not? My name is Kenan, and I'll be your host here today. But All right, Kenan. Things, let's make one thing crystal clear. This is not Holland. Mm -hmm. Yes, you heard me right. If you're saying Holland, you're doing it wrong. Holland was earlier referred to as a common name for the two provinces, North Holland and South Holland. Okay. But as of January 2020, the Dutch government officially dropped the nickname of the country. So now there's just the Netherlands, okay? Well, it actually always was, but yeah, now you know. Let's move on. The home of the windmills and the tulips. But believe it or not, there is so much more to this country, like being the healthiest people in the world in regards to diets. Now, how is that possible? Oh man, that, that actually looks delicious. I'm actually getting hungry. ...with all the cheese that they eat, or being the most physically active population of Europe. Well, that one is pretty obvious. It's because they ride bikes all freaking day. Okay. Yeah, trust me when I say this. They love their bicycles. Anyway, all right. these giants. Yeah, we get into that later on. See How did... Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I, I heard a stereotype. Wait, not a stereotype. I heard just a rumor. People in Netherlands, are you giants? If you're friendly giants, please type, yes, we are friendly giants, and you will not feast upon our souls. If we have any people from the Netherlands, say hello. We love you from Chicago. <laughs> Seem to just have it all. You definitely do not want to miss this episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, cheese lovers and liberal people, we present to you the red, white, and blue, and apparently orange, Ooh. the Netherlands. Oh, and hold your breath because the sea will try to drown you while you're here. Quick country fact. Oh, that's that's not cool. Located in northwestern Europe, this low-lying country, which by the way is the actual meaning of Netherlands, is kind of sandwiched between Belgium and Germany, like most countries in Europe, being close to Germany, that is. With a total area of 41,850 kilometers squared, it's one of the smaller countries in Europe, ranking in on the 32nd place in regards to land area, right above Moldova and just below, like really just below Switzerland. The Kingdom of the Netherlands also includes a few more places in the world. First, there is a place referred to as the Dutch Caribbean that contains the islands of Bonaire, St. Eustasis, and Saba. Then there's a few more islands that separately belong to the kingdom and go under the name of the ABC Islands, named Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire again. Then there's also the island named Sint Martin. The North Sea is located to the north and west of the Netherlands, and it's continually... So, I... Hold on, let me just rewind it again. So I'm guessing that's their, their colonies that they have? a few more places in the world. First, there is a place referred to as the Dutch Caribbean that contains the islands of Bonaire, St. Eustasis, and Saba. Then there's a few more islands that separately belong to the kingdom and go under the name of the ABC Islands, named Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire again. Then there's also the island named Sint Martin. 
The North Sea is located to the north and west of the Netherlands, and it's continually eating the land itself. In fact, there is a Dutch saying, God made the earth, but the Dutch made Holland. And yes, I know, I said there was no such thing as Holland, but they're referring to the provinces I mentioned earlier, which is where most of Dutch people live nowadays. But don't get it twisted here, the country is called the Netherlands, nothing else. But what did they mean by that saying? Well, in fact, almost a third of the Netherlands is below sea level. And if it wasn't for the people, the Dutch country wouldn't even be there today. The Dutch came out strong, fighting the sea itself by building a series of canals, dams, dikes, and pumping stations that over the years made it possible for the water to go through the country rather than over it. And today, there are more than 4,400 kilometers of dikes, rivers, and canals shielding the low-lying country. This is also the reason for all the windmills you see around the country. They were simply used to drain the land of water and help the Dutch survive. Oh, and there's three major rivers that cross the country to help with the flow of the water. They're named the Meuse, the Scheldt, and the Rhine. So, with whatever okay. land service the Dutch had remaining, they had to be creative with it and find innovative solutions for everything. And I guess they did, because they have about 17.5 million people living in this area. Something that makes the Netherlands the most densely populated country in the European Union, and in fact, one of the most densely populated countries in the world. What? Dutch is the official language of the country. A language most similar to German, if anything. Dutch or Netherlandic, as it can also be called, but probably shouldn't, is also spoken in Belgium with a bit of a dialect, but here it's called Flemish. Most people in the country also speak English and often a bit of German or French as well. Then there's Frisian, which is spoken in the northern Friesland region. Hmm. Also, it's worth mentioning that the Afrikaans language of South Africa is basically Dutch with an African twist. The religion of the Netherlands is kinda Roman- Oh, that's right, because again, uh, there was the- uh, There was a colony set up in South Africa. I think it was the Orange Province? No, I'm, I'm getting it wrong. I'm sorry about that. Catholics, but I say kinda because only about 20% of the population identify with its religion. Actually, about half of the country's population don't identify with any particular religion at all. Today, the Netherlands embodies the liberal middle road of having both freedom of religion as well as freedom from religion. And there's a strong growth of eatism, which can be described as a faith without a religion. So basically a person saying, I don't believe in God, but I do think there is something out there. The flag of the Netherlands can so, agnostic. All right, gotcha. Consist of three horizontal striped lines with the colors red, white, and blue. USA. In the early days, the red stripe was actually orange to symbolize the Prince of Orange, which the rebel province fought under in the independence war against Spain between the years 1568 and 1648. But since red was easier to see at sea, <laughs> How do you like that pun? They changed the orange to red. And so, these have been the official color since the 19th of February, 1937, when Queen Wilhelmina made the decision. However, most of us have seen the orange color still being representative of the Netherlands, especially in different sport events. So, what's up with that? The simple answer to that orange color refers to the Dutch royal family, the House of Orange Nassau. And their answer... Huh. I am unfamiliar with the... I I mean, I'm familiar with the idea of the royal family orange, but uh, I guess the, the, the house of orange, but I guess um, in regards to royal monarchs from Europe, I'm just too familiar, I guess, with the British monarchs. I'm again, again, there, 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 that is, that is an unknown subject to me. So maybe we'll, we'll know a little bit more about the uh, royal family of the Netherlands. Ancestor William of Orange, who is the founding father of the Netherlands. But this kind of turns us into the history segment of things, so let's jump right in there, shall we? History segment. Alright, so try to keep up now because we have a lot to cover, and I'm running out of space with a script. <clears throat> but for the purpose of history, let's bring okay. ourselves back to the prehistoric times of roughly 250,000 BP. To a so when Macedons and woolly mammoths were walking around, those are cool animals place called the Low Countries. This place is generally understood to include the territory of what today are referred to as the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. This is where we find the first remains of human life in the Netherlands. But take a leap in time until the year 1275 and the founding of Amsterdam, the greatest planned city of Northern Europe. This city has always been well known in history and played a very central part in the history of the Netherlands. Then in 1568, Spain came to ruin all the fun. 
With the Spanish king and his governor in the forefront, they tried to dominate the Netherlands and introduce its taxation there. So there was war, 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 then a little bit of war and some war to that as well. All oh, geez, Louise, come on, man. Goodness gracious, Cretaceous, come on. Can't we all just get along? All in all, we're looking at 80 years worth of war against Spain until 1581, where the United Provinces declared their independence from Spain. Then comes the discovery period, or the golden age of colonialism, if you so will. And boy, oh boy, was the Dutch a force to be reckoned with here. They expanded all over the world and discovered new lands left and right. From America to Asia, Africa, and South America, the Dutch had colonized them all. So by the mid-17th century, they were actually the biggest maritime power in Europe. Yeah, suck on that, Spain! One of the more known stories is the one of how Director General of the Dutch West India Company, mm -hmm. Peter Min Wee, bought the entire Manhattan Island for $24. $24 now can buy you just only a Hershey candy bar, and that's at best. Who remembers when money used to do things? I do, and so does Petridge Farm. Now money can't do anything. $24. Pardon me if I'm a little bit silenced, but, uh, you know, just like, come on. 24 bucks. $24? I'm not angry. I'm just furious. I remember a time when money used to mean something. But I guess that's gone now. But is it true, though? No, it's not. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank you. Ah, my heart feels better. Story has it Peter offered some trinkets and glass, which with today's value would be around $24, in exchange for ownership of the land to some natives he ran into. Peter felt like a boss, obviously, since he had done the deal of, well, ever, but the deal didn't turn out that well in the end. First, the natives who sold him the land didn't actually own it. Sorry, Peter, you've been scammed. And also, the Dutch turned out to have very little interest in colonizing the area after all. This led to the English naval force simply sailing into the harbor in 1664 and took over New Amsterdam without firing a single shot. Charles II of England then later gave the territory to his brother, James II of England, the Duke of York, and the land was later named New York. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Cle clever. Hey, right, hey, what should we call it? Let's just call it New York. Unoriginal name. The Netherlands then started a slow but constant economical growth and implemented important constitutional reforms, which led them to be a liberal and modern state. In World War I, the country remained neutral. But in World War II, like most of the European countries, they were invaded by German troops in 1940. After a few years under terror of the Nazis, the whole country began to suffer the burden of war. So when the Nazis tried to incorporate the Netherlands into the Third Reich, they fought back. After the difficult years of trying to reconstruct the country right after World War II, the Netherlands had exponential economic growth in the second half of the 20th century. And today, they're one of the most developed and wealthiest countries in the world. Fun facts. So what's some fun facts about the Netherlands? Well, for starters, Dutch men are the tallest in the world. How tall? They have been on top for quite some time now, with an average length of 1.83 meters, but the women aren't exactly short either, averaging at 1.69 meters. So let's see, six feet for the guys, 5.54 feet for the women. Meh, all right, whatever. Okay. Only losing out to the women of Latvia. Then there is this absolutely fascinating fact about this country. Did you know that the carrots are orange because of the Dutch? Back in the 10th century, the vegetable was actually white or purple, but as you know, orange is a big deal in the Netherlands. So, as a tribute to William the Orange, the Dutch farmers tried to make their carrots orange. And we all know the results of that. Then there's the flower. Hashtag bring back the different color carrots or more specifically, the tulips. Now there is an understatement that these are a big part of the Netherlands. But did you know that about 75% of the entire world's flower bulbs are exported from the Netherlands? Pretty crazy when you think about it. Okay. As we mentioned earlier, the Dutch have been a really clever people, using their creativity to find ways to save their land from the sea, trying to drown them. 
One of the things they made are windmills, and there are actually over 1,000 of them throughout the country. And speaking of being creative, the city of Amsterdam is in fact completely built on top of over 1 million wooden poles, which extends around 12 meters into the ground. The city was built on a very wet, swampy land, so talk about trying to see the possibilities instead of focusing on things being impossible. And if you didn't know, they love bikes. They love them so much that the Dutch own more bicycles than any other country in the world. About All right, well, good luck, bicyclists in Chicago. Let, 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 let me tell you something. It's kind of a little bit infuriating with, in regards to how, how that's all settled here in the city because, my goodness gracious, is, is it quite maddening. About 22 million of them are present in the country. So that's more than one per person on average. Did I mention that they love bikes? Yes, you so did. What famous people does this country have? And what things are they known for in the world? Well, besides bikes, tulips, and windmills, there are a few more things that they should have credit for. Well, for starters, it's home of the world's first stock exchange, established in 1602. Like the Bitcoin logo that I saw there by the Dutch East India Company. If you've ever been to the Netherlands, chances are small you've missed that they like cheese. The Dutch have a long history of cheese making, but mm. the most famous one is without a doubt, the Gouda cheese. Ooh. Then there is Vincent van Gogh. Most of us have heard this extremely- Yes, of course, poor, poor Vincent. I'll never forget that episode of Doctor Who where he was given a special treatment. Oh, poor Vincent. You need a hug, buddy famous painter. He's one of the most influential figures in Western art, and he made over 2,000 artworks in his lifetime. His most notable works being Starry Night, Sunflowers, and the Siesta. This country is just amazing! And it would take me a day to tell you every single thing about this place. We could mention Anne Frank, football, Rembrandt, licorice, beer, and probably a million- No, you should have mentioned the beer. What's wrong with you? I had to slap you upside the head in other things as well, but the space of my script has come to an end yet again. So what did you think of the video? Did you learn anything? If you're from the Netherlands, what did we miss? I'd love to hear your opinions so I can keep making better and better videos. Until next week, take care. Okay, well, I think we learned some things new about the Netherlands. First of all, uh, I had no idea that you lovely people were facing off against the violent, vicious, and voracious forces of the seas. So I hope you guys, guys and gals, keep on winning. I didn't know that uh, all you people there were giants. But uh, hey, you know, I got some love for the giants. After all, Chicago, Chicago can have an open heart for the giant people. <laughs> Uh, obviously, cheese, uh, Gouda cheese sounds quite delicious, and uh, the food looks quite lovely. So, to our, you know what? Let's actually find out something here. Let's actually find out something interesting. Chicago sister city, Netherlands. Let's see if we got a sister city. If we do have a sister city from the Netherlands, let's let's uh, let's go see. I know Osaka, Japan is one of our uh, sister cities. You know, I know we got uh, Bogota, Colombia. Come on. We got Hamburg, Germany. Who else we got? Osaka, Japan. Mexico City. Milan. Moscow and Kiev. Oh, boy, that's an awkward family meeting. Uh, let's see. Who else? We got pa Oh, Paris. Really? Huh. Toronto, Canada, Warsaw, Poland. Huh. What? Well, uh, hold on. Let's go ahead and uh, keep looking a little bit further. Let's let's go see. Hold on. Okay, we got Birmingham for the United Kingdom, Athens, Greece. Osaka, Japan, Hamburg, Germany, Galloway. I, I guess we don't have any sister city in the, the Netherlands, huh? Okay, so let's 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 let's, uh, let's, let's have a, 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 a somebody from the Netherlands step up. What is the greatest city that we should check out from Chicago? You know, let's where 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 should where should uh, a Chicago people go ahead and see? 
the most wonderful city in the Netherlands. That's right, people of the Netherlands, you have to fight it out. Which city is the greatest of the cities? Type, type, type in the comment section below. We would love to hear from all of you. And if this is comment uh, content that all of you like, well, please uh, type, type, type in the comment section below. We'd love to hear back from you. Until then, keep your heads on a swivel, eat some cheese, drink some beer. I would like to know a little bit more about the beer in, in uh, the Netherlands, but perhaps all of you hip cool cats can recommend something that we should check out. Until then, take care, drink water, and be safe and take care of each other. I'm up out of here.